Hello everyone, my name's Jack, I'm from Adaptivist and I'm taking the 5 minute content formatting macros for Confluence challenge, turning this really basic and boring Confluence page into something way more interesting and engaging and I'm going to do it all in just 5 minutes. So let's start that countdown clock now. We should have also just added some dramatic music in, in post, uh, seems like the right thing to do. Um, also, I'm going to absolutely fly through these settings. I know these macros uh, fairly well now and I know how I want these set up. Uh, but don't worry if you miss anything. They are super easy to use, but there are also tons of demos available to you if you head to adaptivist.com. Um, or indeed, even better than that, why not install it into your Confluence? Uh, it's available across cloud, DC server, um, and it's available for free as a free trial. Um, so already racing ahead. I know I've already done a lot here. Uh, I've already added uh, a couple of background macros. I've now added the button macros, which I love, it means that I can add a little fun icon or a little uh, icon that gives me a, a stronger indication of what that button is aiming to do. So that's a really cool feature. And now I'm already onto my third macros. We're only gonna do four, so, so don't panic. I'm um, gonna come back to some of these macros and use them in slightly different ways than I have already. Uh, so I'm onto the card macros, which is a really valuable uh, tool that enables you to highlight some content. I don't know if you saw from the start of the video where I had this as just one image. Uh, what I'm choosing to do is break this into uh, three images. I think that's a really cool and dramatic way of, of showing it. Uh, not as dramatic as the music, obviously, but still fairly uh, impactful I feel. Um, so there's loads of features and loads of seconds not even using with the card macros. So you can create these as call to action buttons uh, or call to action links. Uh, I'm just using them for display purposes uh, and I'm using the vertical setup but we might use or we will use another one of the, the card features a little bit later on in this demo. So that's great. I've got all three of my cards set up. Uh, I'm just going to copy this paste, uh, copy this text uh, and drop it into the background macros that I created earlier. Let's do that full width. Uh, I also already, already changed the text colour. So you'll notice it was a very uh, dark and, and spacey background that I used uh, and the text probably wouldn't appear on it great but you saw in a little preview window that using the white text I can um, uh, I can change the text colour in these tool settings um, and that's automatically going to do it for me. You can see here actually on this instance the text doesn't appear great until I've actually reduced the weight of the image and um, displayed the background colour uh, more prominently. You don't have to use images, you can use uh, colors, there's some default colors available, but there is a, uh, a color picker. You can kind of choose any color you really want. And what I'm doing for, for this background macros is I'm actually changing how that uh, background color appears, how it shines through onto the image. So it, it's going to appear differently. Or it's going to appear in three different ways when it comes to the final page. The other thing that I did is I made sure that all of my background macros there were uh, 300 pixels high. Uh, that means that it's going to you know, look a little, bit, a little bit more uniform and a little bit more clean. Um, so as I promised, I'm coming back to the card macro. Uh, I am using the simple setup this time. This is just a really nice uh, non-image based way of showing and displaying your content. Much more uh, engaging and, and interesting to look at than the, the plain bullet points I had on the original page. Um, and what I love about this tool is I'm going to go ahead and I've already changed the colour to one of the default colours we've got available to you, uh, but I'm going to change one of them to uh, this kind of lighter blue as well. So this is really great if you're kind of highlighting content or want to make a feature of uh, some particular piece of information that you really want to stand out. So how am I doing for time? Uh, okay, we're one minute 20. We've still got a whole other section to do. Uh, so let's go. So I've got a, uh, like a kind of uh, uh, what, what I'm going to go on to now is I'm going to go back to my background macros and I'm going to use a feature called the progress bar. Uh, that one is going to give me some sort of journey in the three pages that I have set up or have set up in this demo. Uh, and on the background macros, what you've just seen there is the ability to repeat backgrounds. Um, so if you've got a pattern or you've got a texture that you think would look great, uh, then you've got the ability to do that and, and, and have that display you know, seamlessly and, and really simply. So as I say, there's so many different options you've got for the background macro. 
I'm really running out of time. I've got about 30 seconds. Uh, I'm gonna do this progress bar in three steps. Uh, so I've created one, I've copied it across three times, and that means I can go back in and, and change the settings. So all the features are saved when I've copied that across. This is my second step, which uh, in the process that I've set up, I'm making it my main step. Uh, 15 seconds, okay, nearly there. So step three, I think I'm gonna do it. There we go, pretty much there, right? I liked what I was doing, making this all full screen. And I'm pretty much there, right? Let's just stop the clock. Done, fantastic. So that should be it. So let's publish the page. And there we go. So we've got our beautiful backgrounds. We've got our image highlighted. We've got our button. We've got those three background spaces, 300 pixels high. We've got a nice highlighted block. Give it a go, give it a try yourself. Good luck.